Hi everyone, this is Julianne Victoria of Through the Peacock's Eyes. In this deck tour slash deck review video, I'll be looking at five different decks that are very unique or unusual. Now these decks, mostly I just use for personal study or just to add to my collection, um, but they are very interesting if you wanted to work with them. They'd be great for intuition development, so working with intuitively reading cards, whether that's tarot or oracle, but these are tarot cards. Um, working with archetypes, studying archetypes, or working with your own archetypes, and doing shadow work or deep inner transformational work. So these are not all of them, but they can be intense cards, some of these. Um, now these aren't the best decks if you're new to Tarot, you're a beginner, unless you're already a psychic in some way and you've been working with symbolism and archetypal energy and so on. Um, but if you're an advanced Tarot reader and you want some challenging cards or something really different to work with, these would be interesting ones to get. Okay, so trying to decide which one I want to start with. Oh, one of them, I will have to switch the camera around and be filming on the table or on the desk um, because it wouldn't work if I was holding it up and you'll understand why when I get to that, but I'll do that one last. Okay, so let's start with the Dreams of Gaia Tarot. And I had this one on my little shopping list for like two years, and I finally got it. And I am actually blown away by this deck. It is much more than I was thinking it was going to be. It was on my list because I love the artwork. Um, and as many of you probably know, you know, I, I, I like different decks because it's kind of like an art collection for me, as well as like personal study. Um, so I was drawn to the artwork of this, but the deck itself is so much more. So I've broken it up um, into the suits and the major arcana here. Now the major arcana of the dreams of Gaia Tarot can itself be separated out and used as an oracle deck. And I say that because all the cards have been renamed. Um, and it's just beautiful. I mean, they've been renamed and the major arcana, especially of the dreams of Gaia, can be used as an archetype study aid. Okay, so here we have number 14, which would be Temperance. It's called Destiny. Zero, the Fool. In this deck, it's called Choice. Eight, which normally would either be Strength or Justice, depending on the system of the decks you have. Here it is Death, Rebirth. Number three, which would normally be the Empress, is called the Youth. So com completely different archetypes or very different archetypes from a standard Tarot Major Arcana. Here we have 11, which would be Justice or Strength, and it's called Healing. 15, which would normally be the Devil. In this deck, it's called Abundance. And I'll do one more. So 12, which would normally be the hanged man, is called love. So working with this deck would definitely challenge you if you're a tarot reader, um, but a great way to work with new perspectives on the archetypes of the major arcana. Okay. Now the minor arcana in this deck, again, it's the dreams of Gaia Tarot. Um, is broken up into elements and so it has the normal 14 so the 10 ace through 10 and then the the four court cards so it has kings and queens but instead of pages and knights one of them is like an element sort of I'll show you and the other one is a different type of human character which you could see as another type of archetype Okay, so for air, and the cards only have the alchemical symbols, so that's air. So the two court cards, instead of page and knight, we have the scribe. So you can see this as working with a new archetype. And we have body-mind. And as you can see, they're numbered. So 11 would be the page in each of the suits, the equivalent, if it's 
it's not really equivalent, but if you wanted to think of it that way, and then the twelves would be the knights. Okay. And then for earth, we'll do 11 first, we'll do them in order. <laughs> we have, so the sort of element card, so the air was body mind. For the earth cards, we have heaven and earth. And then the seneschal or seneschal, which is like a servant to the king. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I meant to look it up, but I forgot. <laughs> Okay, for the fire suit, the number 11 card is masculine feminine, and the 12 is the hero. So as you can see, the 12s are what would normally be the knights are the archetypal character, and what would be the page is the sort of elements polarity. Yeah, because we have body, mind, heaven, earth, masculine, feminine. Now for water, we have emotion, intellect. And the number 12 is the counselor. Okay. Now the rest of the minors, I'll just show you a few here since we're in water. So the three of water. the seven of water, the eight of water, so very non-traditional symbolism, and a couple of fires, so we have ten of fire, the seven of fire, so definitely would challenge anyone to work to read these cards intuitively. The four of earth, the seven of earth, and then air, Let's see, ace of air, and four of air. Very interesting take on the four of air. Okay, um, this is a slightly larger than normal deck. I won't do the shuffles because this is going to be a longer video, but it's a slightly, whoops, larger than normal to row size deck. That is the back, and it is beautifully gilded. So slightly larger, but not so large that it's hard to shuffle if you have small hands. Okay, now the next deck I'll talk about is very cute. It's definitely um, homemade. It's the creators made it themselves. You could see, before I show you what it is, I don't know if you could see that on camera, the rough edging where you have to separate all the cards out from the big sheet. So this is definitely made, handmade by the creators. I forget where I stumbled across this deck, um, but since I got it, I looked up the website and it's from 2010. So it's not in print, obviously, but you may be able to find some decks out there. It is called the Tarot of Physics. Um, it has a little a little spread guide there. Um, and all the cards are related to something in physics. So if you have a science background or you love physics or you're into quantum physics as part of your spiritual study, um, which I, I love quantum physics, I've read quite a few books on it, um, you might like this deck. So the fool is the Big Bang. And it says here, in the beginning there was perfect balance and all was one. And it has singularity. The magician is light wave. A light wave travels so fast that time appears to stop. Now these were well thought out. They weren't just random physics concepts and, and, and definitions applied to them. The high priestess is the semiconductor. It says crystals interact with electromagnetic signals. And let's do a couple more. Strength is leverage. A lever multiplies the force applied to an object. So I just love this deck, but that's kind of the nerdy, geeky part of me. Um, justice is double helix. 
The Hanged Man Suspension. Of course. Oh, this is actually my favorite. The death card is Black Hole. Energy, matter, space, and time collapse in a black hole. So a fun, kind of quirky deck. Um, it is a little smaller. I think it's, it might be standard like poker size. This is the back. I love the double Ouroboros there with the snake in the middle. This is entanglement. Um, the front is uh, feels like paper and the back is laminated. So a cute, fun, quirky little deck. It would challenge you to use it for readings. Um, I haven't actually done a reading. I just love looking at the cards and I did recently get it. So I haven't used it a whole lot, but because it is so unique and out of print, I'm trying not to use it a whole lot. And it comes in just a plain, a plain cotton bag. Okay. Now the next deck, I found this on Game Crafter um, when I was doing research for my own cards. And this deck is called the Tarot or Tarot of the Secret Dawn. So it's put out by Tarot Professionals. Um, and I'm still waiting to get to be emailed the key for this deck. Um, so hopefully it will be coming soon. Um, but it's just 22 cards. I wouldn't say that they are the major arcana. I just thought it sounded really interesting and I would add it to my collection. But I'll show you a few of the cards. They are large. They're extra large. But it's only 22, so it's very thin. Um, just to compare, so the Tarot of Physics is like a normal poker size. And this is the Tarot of the Secret Dawn. Okay. So I'll just show you some of the cards. It's all, it's just symbols. So definitely a card to really use to tap into intuition. Also to learn symbolism. Great study cards. The Caduceus. It has the astrological symbols. So they're like hand-drawn. The backgrounds are sepia. One kind of interesting thing though is that even though they're all sepia colored, they're different shades. So I'm not sure why the inconsistency, there doesn't seem to be a system to it. Um, might just been with the, the uploading of the images. But they are very interesting. Again, great study cards that can be used for personal study, inner work. Um, but you would have to do some symbolism research. Okay. Now the next deck is definitely a deck for working with shadow, shadow work, shadow aspects of yourself. Um, I debated about getting this deck for a long, long time. And I finally decided to go for it because I felt like it would be a good deck to have to really get into those dark spaces within for myself or clients, um, clients who are ready for this, um, kind of to challenge um, myself to go even further into little dark spaces that need light. Okay, so it's called the Tarot of Shadows. And it's actually from the Ukraine, yes. It comes with its own teeny little hardcover book, which is really helpful. So there are 78 cards, and the cards are numbered 1 to 78. So the first uh, 22 are the major arcana, and then it moves into the minor arcana. But the minor arcana are not separated out by suit, and I'll show you some of the cards in a sec. It does come with two key cards. So it has, you know, the wands, I don't know how well you can see that, like wands, and then cups. So two C is for two of cups, and it gives the correlation, um, the ruling planet, the year, um, so the correlation to which card in this deck it is. So it gives a little bit of um, 
extra information and under year it gives like the year the astrological year in the Chinese astrology system so like two of pentacles is year of the rat um, two of pentacles in Western astrology is the first decanate or the first decant of Capricorn which is ruled by Jupiter not Capricorn the first decade okay the first tenth so the decades or they call them decanates are the three breaking up each sign in two thirds okay so I'll show you some of these cards this is the back which can be you know that can just be a turn off for a lot of people kind of a scary Satan symbol but I did eventually decide to get this deck because it can really help me or help me work with clients who are really digging deep into those dark spaces that need light. So number 31 is the Sorcerer's Protection. Number three of what would be the Major Arcana, but number three in this deck as well, which would be the Empress, is Hecate. Number 44 is Spoon of Rosemary. Number 60 is Avarice. So the book with this would be really helpful. Number 67 is Orpheus. So Greek mythology. So it draws upon a lot of different mythologies. Um, it's not solely Christian based, as you can see. Um, number 76 is Mars's Cruelty. Number 46 is Parsley Basil Fern. So a little herbalism in here as well. 49 is Two Black Candles. And number 17, which would be the star in a traditional deck, is the Star of Lucifer. So this would definitely be, in all respects, a very challenging deck whether you wanted to read with it whether you wanted to personally work with it um, and even as a study it would get you looking up all sorts of uh, religion and mythological stories and symbolism okay so the fifth deck is coming up next the fifth deck I'd like to share here today is called the Transparent Tarot. So yes, the cards are transparent. Um, it's created by Emily Carding, and she was the creator of the Tarot of the She, and I did a review on that a couple months ago, I think. So you can check that out. It comes with this white sheet or white cloth. Um, so you do need to lay these cards down on a light colored surface or a light cloth. Um, otherwise, they won't show up. So let's show some of the cards. So here we have 15. You can hold this so you can see the devil. So very simple imagery. So this is a great deck for working on developing your intuition. Um, and I would say for doing deep inner work because it is so simple yet so, so profound. So this is the Ace of Cups. Here we have number five, which is the Hierophant. The Queen of Pentacles. Twenty-one, the World. The Three of Pentacles. The Eight of Cups. Here we have the Knight of Wands. Let's do a couple more. The Two of Wands. And the Nine of Swords. So definitely a challenging deck to work with, but it could be fun to work with it as, as well. And you can, depending on your spread, overlay the cards and images depending on the spread you're working on and see how the images interact with each other. So that is quite fascinating. Um, it, they are plastic cards, of course, fairly standard tarot size cards, maybe slightly larger. Um, you can shuffle them, <laughs> I've tried, um, but because they are plastic, 
if you live in a humid place and it's very humid here right now the cards tend to stick together so keep that in mind but a very interesting deck to work with to challenge your intuition um, and to do some deep inner work and also just a fun deck to play with if you're you know say the knight is meeting up the queen and someone's walking away from the what they've done and moving towards the queen you know you can work with the images and play with them so here we have here's a king you know maybe you lay down the cards and you have the king meeting up with the queen and then maybe they're in conflict so it, it's a very fascinating deck to work with um, i haven't worked with it a whole lot because i don't use this cards it, this deck for readings for clients um, but now that I have it out again, I might work with it a little bit more. I hope you found these five decks interesting. They would definitely be challenging to work with. Um, but if you like that challenge, you want to really work with your intuition and develop it. You want to study symbolism and archetypes even deeper or do some shadow work, some deep inner transformational work. These would be very interesting decks to work with. All right, thank you for stopping by, liking, sharing, and subscribing, and I'll see you back here soon.